204,000 people is too much. One person is too much. Should it never happen, he will shut it down again. He will destroy this country. Well, the pandemic and the economy, they're intertwined. And yet another heated discussion in tonight's first presidential debate. As one ABC News correspondent found out on the road recently, this election is likely to come down to who voters trust most on the economy. You went on a 6,000-mile road trip across America to see what was on voters' minds. What did you find out? Well, I, I think a lot of people are talking this about weird the economy lady. more than anything else. I was very surprised, Whoopi, because COVID, when you cross the country, you wouldn't really know what's happening. I was really shocked at how few people were wearing masks in certain areas. It's almost like, look, I'm tired of this, so I'm just going to get back doing what I wanted to do before. I also uh, found there yeah. wasn't, a, wasn't a whole lot of enthusiasm for, for Joe Biden. Okay, so let's discuss perhaps the two... There has and never has... There's never been... The pandemic and the economy with Fox News contributor... There's never Dr. been Mark enthusiasm for Joe Biden. Welcome to both of you. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Okay, so one of the things they discussed tonight, the former vice president had plenty of criticism for the way he thinks the Trump administration has handled this, but again, he was casting doubt on the vaccine that the president says may be available at least in the beginning doses within a few weeks. Here's what the former vice president said. We're for a vaccine, but we, I don't trust him at all, nor do you. I know you don't. What we trust is a scientist. You don't we trust, trust Dr. Fauci. All right, Dr. Siegel, this has been a big point of contention. A number of high-profile Democrats saying they don't trust this He's going to let Fauci Who's run the whole country. The FDA? Can the president influence it? What should we think? Give me a break. We're told is ready. He's going to promote AOC. Well, Shannon, I'm deeply disturbed about how political this has become because when the vaccine is ready, we need people to take it, starting with high risk groups, starting with healthcare workers. And if healthcare workers take it first, then the rest of the country maybe will breathe a sigh of It's been political from the very afterwards. beginning, doctor. Just because the president has knowledge of what the pharmaceuticals are saying doesn't mean that he's directly influencing the process. In fact, the FDA has an advisory committee meeting on October 22nd. And that's traditionally when the information would, would come out. If there are vaccines ready, if there are vaccines ready at that point, the FDA advisory committee would look at the data. So I think there's a lot of posturing back and forth here. And I'm it's ready by that point. It's over for Biden. The amount of trust that the public has in vaccines. Yeah, and we're seeing that in the poll numbers as they slip from spring until now, how confident people are in whether they would step up and take them. Okay, I want to read something from the Wall Street Journal, an opinion piece, um, a UCLA professor talking about how to live with COVID, not for it. He says, the point of life is living, and everyone is better off with policies that focus on protecting the most vulnerable populations. That doesn't take universal rapid testing or never-ending mandates. It requires only abandoning fear, being sensible about who's targeted for testing and protections, expanding treatment capacity and therapies, and choosing to live with the virus rather than to live for it. And Brian, you saw um, ABC's Martha Raddatz saying there, a lot of folks out there in the heartland are just over it. They want to get back to work. They want to get their jobs done. They are willing to accept some level of risk to get back to life as normal. How do we balance these competing interests? Yeah, you know, Shannon, there's just, there's so much to life. There's more to life than simply being afraid of a virus that may harm you. People have families, they have jobs. They have lives. So as Martha goes out in the country, it's funny to hear a journalist be so surprised by what she saw. I've been out in, in you know, upstate Minnesota for the better part of six months around folks in places that she visited. And that's exactly what I've seen for months and months now. People are foolish about the, the virus. They don't think it's not a thing. They're not acting rashly, but they just realize that there are competing interests in, li in life and you have to get back to the things that really have a day-to-day -day impact for you. And so I think the path forward for this country isn't fear, it's not foolishness, but it's understanding that people want to work. It's good for them, they want to reopen. That, by the way, I think was one of the most effective parts of the president's message in the debate tonight. He talked about people wanting to get back to work, wanting their kids to get back to school. He was the economy is that. stupid. That's where he can draw a contrast with Vice President Biden, and we'll see if he continues to hammer that in debates to come because I think that's an issue that the president should have said. Where do these two candidates come down? What can we expect for them? From when them? Joe called the president a clown. Uh, serving as president. 
He could have said, right, the economy is stupid. Two things and get the economy reopened while keeping people safe. Well, you know, I see this slightly differently than Brian in that I'm sure he's going to agree with me that lockdowns are the key problem here that strangled the economy. I do agree with Martha that there's a lot of fatigue with these masks, but I just wish from a public health point of view that people would understand that a little bit of distancing and a little bit of masking might go a long way. I want to point out, though, the unbelievable hypocrisy for all of these gatherings going on. I mean, the party of, of extreme masking is also the party of protest, where everybody's cheap to jail. So exactly. So there's no compliance to public health across the board, and that's disturbing to me. Exactly. The lockdowns are what's cost, costing the economy, I believe. Wow. Yeah, and people, if they don't um, have faith in what their um, leaders are telling them, uh, they're not going to cooperate. So there the we go. Doctor Our Dr. Knows. Siegel, Brian Weinberg, thank you both. Dr. Siegel knows what's going on, thank exactly. You. Exactly. Right, we're going to investigate another big topic from tonight's debate, mail-in voting, next.